Hey guys, so we're in Italy. I've been honored to play alongside and judge alongside Theodore Milkov and Nani Mamura, and we're hanging out here in the hotel. We found a quiet room. Uh, we're blowing off a concert right now, but um, these guys were nice enough to do that and be out of the mosquitoes for an hour and, <laughs> and talk to us a little bit. So um, I'm gonna start with Theo. So we had you on, I forget what episode, you know, 40 something I imagine, and at the time, you had applied to PASIC, and you didn't have a result yet, but now you know you're playing PASIC, and we said that uh, you know, in, the, in the video description, yeah, but that's good. Yeah. Um, can you, just because there's people out there that don't know, um, how are you gonna get to PASIC? You've made a fundraiser. I made a fundraiser, yeah, so, because so I, real, I realized that, I, realized that I, I have to pay everything by myself, I didn't know that. Right, At like PAS, time. unfortunately, can't pay for us to go play. Yeah, that's it. true, and not many people know that, I think. Right. Yeah, I did this fundraiser, and uh, a couple of days ago, actually, uh, I got a message from a Russian guy, actually, in, in St. Petersburg, and uh, he said, uh, so what is this fundraiser about? He didn't quite got it. You know, he doesn't speak English very well. So I explained that I'm going to basic, and I need, you know, I need the money, hehe, <laughs> to bother. And, uh, you know, his question was, but it's a festival, so they invited you, so they don't pay anything, or et cetera, right, et cetera. So right. I had to explain that, you know, actually they just approve or disapprove your application, then it's up to you how you're going to go there. And, and this, I should say, is, is frustrating to the organizers of PASIC also. I mean, they would, of course, love to afford all of us to be at PASIC, but, you know, how many, you know, over 100 artists probably there. Um, so it's a it's a hard. I imagine that's a very hard realization for them to come to. Like, okay, we can't, you know, fly all these artists in. Uh, but this solution of making a fundraiser is a really great idea. Well, for me, it's it's kind of the the only way because you know the expenses are huge, and uh, I don't have endorsements yet. At least sponsors who can cover my expenses. That's crazy. Um, Theodore Milkov doesn't have endorsements yet. Simple. Yeah, well, you could have them tomorrow if you want, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe tonight. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it just didn't happen yet, um, or I'm too strange or picky. I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> you're pretty, way. you're pretty strange. I'm, I'm pretty strange for sure. And uh, well, you know, anyway, you know, I, I have to find a way how to to be there, and I really want to be there. Um, so yeah, I did this fundraise. It's an online fundraiser, right? Go fund yourself or something? No, it's uh, it goes by uh, Indiegogo. Right, it goes Indiegogo. by Indiegogo, and it's on oh, it's on Facebook. It's actually going pretty well. Um, I had uh, many friends who donated, many people who you know. One of the perks is my new tutorial that's coming up in September. <laughs> yeah. Like online tutorial? Yeah, I like the continuation of the previous one of the um, how is it called? Oh, I forgot the name. Well, the name the, the transfer matter. fluidity, yes. The, the, one that, the, the thing that matters is that you say, yeah. you know, they say I'm this... this <laughs> I'm the talented this, guy, this, but this talented I was guy. working, yes. yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, one of the perks is this, and it, it's going quite well. Uh, and, uh, and many famous guys, actually, famous yeah. percussionists who... They happen to know me, they actually contributed, and it, it, it's unbelievable, you know, like Pedro Carnero contributed like yesterday, and he sent me a nice email, like, Theo, I just want you to be there, and etc, etc. It was actually amazing, I was amazed by, you know. Yeah, well, well like I said before, you know, uh, Gordon Stout, yeah. uh, he's pointed to you as a, a, a new player of doing these new amazing things, I've pointed to you as this new player yes. doing amazing things, so it's... It's something that it makes perfect sense to me. People would happily contribute a little money to bring you to the U.S. Well, so I'm, people I'm, can see I'm this. I'm thankful and grateful, and uh, but it's you know you have to understand my position. You know, I'm always kind of thank, thanking people, you know, in, in interviews. But you know, if you see my view, my in, if you're in my shoes, let's say, you know, I, I'm just a guy from Greece and I don't know anybody, and all of a sudden there are people who are actually contributing money and they're liking my playing mm -hmm. and they say, if you just like it, just come over and play here, you know, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know? I, I want you to be there because there's all these things you talk about and do that really promote the way I wish people played more and the way I try to get my students to play and that's, like you said today in your class, 
more molar types of things, you know, lift from the lift from the elbow, lift from the arm, use your whole arm to play. Don't just play from your wrists. You know, you have to move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we have this, you know, marimbas have this die hard discussion of, well, which grip is better, what technique is better, and we all hate that discussion. And it's exhausting. And I think something people do is go like, well, look what this guy can do. So that's the right thing. Do that. <laughs> he does this really hard stuff that you can't do without that technique. So that's the technique. Let's quit fighting about it. Uh, yeah, so it makes sense to me. Actually, that's the bottom line. And because, you know, it's uh, what they do is a mixture of a bit of everything. And also, if we speak about music and, okay, technique, it, it's fine. You know, everybody can figure out the way. But the musical way, it's what Nana spoke before. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't know about Buddhism, etc. But some of the aspects what Nana said uh, to listen to yourself from outside and trying to judge yourself or see objectively, etc., etc. These kind of things I'm definitely using, and that's important. So bottom line is like not to be focused on one narrow. Uh, point of view, you know, how to play or which group to use, but try to listen and to be open to other ideas, teachings, and yeah. etc. Yeah. Nana gave a really cool master class and she dropped this huge idea on all of us and the students about Shinto Buddhism and traditional Japanese art and how that influences her playing. Um, so, of course, it's too big to try to explain that here on this interview, but I wonder if you could share that concept of the painting with the trees yeah, yeah, yeah. and the empty space mm-hmm. and suggestion. Mm-hmm. So uh, I introduced uh, the one very famous Jap- uh, Japanese painting uh, by Tohaku Hasegawa. Uh, the painting was written uh, between around 1593. So uh, first, at the first sight, first glance, you know, everybody thinks this is, oh, is this unfinished or uncompleted painting? Because there are lots of spaces, only a few, two or three trees, and then rest of, uh, just tons of space left. Mm-hmm. He didn't even write anything, mountain or anything. Do you think people see that painting and think it's boring or too simple? Because I thought it was really cool. Really, but the many West, uh, I've read the book, and it says at the time when the Western people first saw that painting, they thought unfinished uh-huh. or incompleted work. Because hmm. hmm. to me, it almost seemed like a new painting. And of course, this idea of empty space mm-hmm. and uh, the space gives a suggestion yeah, yeah, for yeah, you yeah. to fill other things in. Yeah. Um, that, that to me is a, a, a new thing, you know, almost mm-hmm. uh, John Cage kind of idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So John Cage, uh, yeah, he learned, he studied Zen Buddhism. Zen is actually, uh, do you know what is Taoism? Tao, that's uh, a Chinese, it came somewhere. from China, China. So Zen Buddhism is a hybrid mix of uh, Indian Buddhism and Chinese Taoism. And then Zen uh, is talks about emptiness so but the emptiness is not a you know really empty or nothing of like this it's a space of uh, potentiality so mm-hmm. it's like uh, you know they ah the emptiness uh, has deep meaning mm, and then when you look at the Tohaku Hasegawa's painting there is lots of space blankness but the viewer the purpose why he left the blankness to you know the viewer can fill in their own imagination or their own emotion uh, story to the painting and then they can actually be they can become a part of the work so uh, basically they say the art um, Japanese art real real art is collaboration between uh, viewer audience and then uh, author through the work. Yeah, great, great. So you, you, uh, you use the medium as a vessel to bring the audience mm-hmm. uh, to, you, I guess, the, the medium, in your case, marimba, 
is Actually, where you're going to yeah, meet music. the audience or mm-hmm. music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to meet the audience there. Yeah. So not just throw your marimba playing in not the just, audience's not, face. Yeah, like playing. Like and I take this idea when I play marimba. You know, I'm not playing. I'm not just you know uh, expressing my own emotion or my feelings. You know, I I'm, uh, I want to co- communicate with the audience. So I use mm, marimba and the music as a tool to communicate uh, with the audience and uh, the purpose I, why, why I play marimba is you know, I want to become one with nature, with the audience and me, myself, marimba. Yeah. And, and do you find it's possible to do that with any piece of music? Are yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Any type of uh, music or dance or theater, even a painting or, you know, yeah, I think it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, hey, you have a new CD coming out. Yeah. Can you tell us a little about it? Uh, yeah, I recorded my fourth solo album last month in Japan uh, with a new label. <laughs> and then. Octa, what are they called? Oct- Octavia. Octavia. Is that Greek? Octavia? Octavia? What's yes. That mean? What's that? From mean? The, it's like a bad food or something. A bad food? <laughs> uh, it's. <laughs> It means eight, actually, no? I think it's like eight. A, eight. Eight, octo, from a Greek Oct- word, octo. Mm-hmm. It means eight, the number eight. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. I think so. Octavia can be that. Octavia, yeah. record. So, uh, so they are very uh, pre- prestigious, uh, classical level in Japan, and then I was so lucky that I you know, got offered to record my solo album from their level. And uh, I've recorded three Bachs, included a uh, Chacon, my new Chacon. I actually, I recorded my uh, a Chacon on my first album a long time ago, but that arrangement was more romantic way. I My arrangement was based on Buzoni's piano version. So I added tons of notes and chords. But now, recently, I've, I've been studying more about real Baroque uh, music. I've listened to many Baroque instrumentalists, so, and I'm learning Baroque articulation. So I made a new arrangement of Bakshikon in Baroque way. Also, I've recorded a Fatality Rites by Christopher Hatzis and Tokara Anna Ignatovich. Karen Concert, Keith Jarrett, and Nimrod uh, by Elgar, and Mario with a cello by Oswald Goryov, and Bird Escape uh, composed by Takashi Yoshimatsu. He's a very, very acclaimed Japanese composer. So is it completely done? Do you have uh, artwork to do or inside information to, to finish, or is it totally done? Oh, I've just recorded uh, but now we need to do um, mastering and editing, okay. and uh, I'm going to write all program notes. What's the cover going to look like? What? The, the CD cover? We haven't the decided, design. we haven't even decided the title yet. Okay. But, uh, I, you know, the level is very, very artistic level, so we think about very, like, philosophical meaning, mm. uh, mm. we kind of title with a very very mm-hmm. deep meaning or something. Yeah, and is that hard? Because of, of course the label has to sell this. Yeah. And, but you know, you have these ideas and these concepts and that's really important to you. So how does that discussion work? And how long does, is that discussion gonna take? Actually, I used to do work with a more bigger commercialized level. So Sony. At the, yeah, Sony. Which play, with PlayStation. <laughs> PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. Do you not like the PlayStation 4? <laughs> I think it's great. I don't know. Oh, I, you know, I'm not a gamer. I'm not interested in uh, computer game. Yeah. Well, and boys. Oops. Uh, <laughs> oops. Uh, oops but anyway, yeah. so... Yeah. Sony, uh, I had a more harder time with the Sony because they're much more bigger and they have to sell you know, a lot of CDs. So if uh, they, uh, when when I made a CD with them, you know, I had to do listen their opinion half, you know, but half and a half. Yeah. You know, I don't really have to do 100% what they want. Mm-hmm like half and a half. But this time, uh, Octavia Re- Record, uh, they're very 
uh, artistic, so they understand the artist. So yeah, I would hope they, they, they trust you entirely. Yeah. yeah so and then, yeah. then yeah, and then they record. They let me record what I want to this time. Mm. I would love to know. Maybe you guys have a good guess. What's the top selling marimba CD ever? I wonder what it is. I think it would be like marimba spiritual or something. Yeah, Ke- but who is the Keikos or? You know, I had, we talked about this earlier, like my first real inspiring percussion CD was Kashka's Marimba Spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was 14 or something, my teacher gave Mm -hmm. it to me, and it's just, or maybe Evelyn, I don't know. It'd be interesting to know. Yeah, Evelyn is huge, yeah. You ask the person, my person, our personal... um, Oh, just a guess, maybe. Just a guess. I don't know so much, I actually don't know so much much about uh, percussion CDs. Yeah. Not at all. I don't even know who played what in which CD. I had like five CDs or something of uh, Lee Stevens, uh, of course, of course, Keikos. Yeah. And uh, Jesus and uh, Nancy. Yeah. Nancy. Nancy's husband. Yeah. So in total, it, I would have like maybe five, six CDs. And I don't know the yeah, market so well, actually. So. Yeah, it's funny. It's almost like two audiences. There's the percussion community that yeah, has, true. has a lot of those CDs you yeah, just named yeah. and that we all know of and have heard. But then I wonder how many get out into the general public. General you know? public. Yeah, and this is probably true. also a, a broader discussion about contemporary music. So all mm. music's contemporary. So, you know, the same struggles contemporary music has, we have. Uh, so, you know, to get it out into the general mm-hmm. public, you know, mm-hmm. people generally don't listen to uh, Stockhausen in the car, you yeah. know. Maybe the Steve uh, Reich, the minimal music was the that's best good, selling. That's, that's a good one. That's a good guess. Yeah, yeah, that could be, yeah, that has a much broader appeal. So, yeah, yeah that could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Cool. Um, so, Theo, what will you play at PASIC? Do you know yet? Mm-hmm. Have you decided? Yeah. I have a, I have a ready program. It's going to be a. It's actually called from Mozart and Bach to Rudwiner and uh, Raymond Heldo, mm-hmm. and uh, it will be a Mozart sonata C major. It will be a Bach partita from the six partitas for clavier for piano. It will be the A minor. Uh, it will be a new. Uh, a piece that I commissioned from Raymond Hello, it's called Pasacalia. And uh, it's going to be one or maybe two pieces uh, by Ruth Wiener. He recently, he's writing some pieces for me. And uh, it's going to be like concert pieces, concert caprices, some etudes, etc, etc. And I'm going to be making my new tutorial now in, in August. And these, are, these pieces are written especially for this reason. And one of them is called Capricci Spagnolo. I think I'm going to be playing this one. By Rimsky Korsakov. Yeah, but without the tambourine. I see. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's going to be the concert, and um, probably half of the program I will um, record this summer, this, this summer as well. It's, it's a second project that I will do. So, I will record. Mozart and the Bach, and then I'm gonna do a Greek uh, poetic tone pictures, and maybe a couple of scarlatti sonatas. So in total, it's like 55 minutes of music. Yeah. So instead of doing CDs like Nanai of, with famous Octavia <laughs> records, <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, yeah I decided that it's kind of interesting just to make videos instead of CDs. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Very nice. Yes. I don't know. I've, I think it might be interesting for people to see as well, you know, and then they can just download it to their, you know, to their gadget and just listen to it. That's so, definitely a discussion a lot of people are having. Should they pour money into CDs still? Into well, make, make you know, it, it depends. If so many, just... It depends if so many classics, classics or Octavia, you know, they, they they offer you such a recording. Of course, you know, you don't pay anything, mm-hmm. as I said, but if you have to cover your expenses, so... I think to make a video of uh, a video session for like five days, it's much, much cheaper than to produce a CD. Because for a CD, you need a professional studio, yeah. you know, and then you need a sound engineer, and then you need to, uh, there is a special, uh, how it's called, uh, 
to yeah. edit, editing, editing mastering, 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 mastering that, yes. that costs money, extra money, mm -hmm. and then you need to shooting a photo jacket. Exactly, and then you need to order like thousand CDs, and yeah. you need to pay for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that is done by special firmas. So, beside the studio, etc., there is all of these other expenses that one has to cover. Uh, so I found, you know, the the shooting a video a video concert like a studio performance that probably I'm going to be calling it. It, it will cost like maybe one third or even less of of a price of for a CD. Recording. Wow! Hmm. Yeah. So this is also one of the reasons that I want to go this direction. Yes. So everyone, we've been judging these, uh, well, I've judged snare drum and percussion ensemble, and then I joined Nana and Theo to do the marimba competition, and we've done what they call talent scout, which is, I youngest. think, the youngest. Under 16. 16 and younger, and then there's junior, which was 21 and younger, I believe. I think so, or mm -hmm. 21 or 22. Mm -hmm. And then senior was 35 and under. And of course, you know, we saw this huge variety. We saw really great playing. We saw not so great playing. Um, but the three of us decided in our hanging out, talking, and, you know, um, that we don't like judging. And I think, <laughs> I know I've felt this way since the beginning. Um, I don't know if you guys felt this way for a long time. And yet here we are yeah. judging. So I, I don't I, like to judge. You know, um, even when I do, you know, one of the jury, I feel like you know I'm at the concert so let me you know let's enjoy music something like that I want to hear I want, yeah you know I don't want like to judge it's a it's a negative word judge yep. judge yeah, judgment yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah for sure I want to communicate with them as a, a same marimbist or artist yeah yeah so yeah but yet here we are <laughs> <laughs> I guess because yeah. it's a gig. I mean, it is a gig. <laughs> it's, it's a you know, gig. and it's uh, yeah. I don't know, Theo. What do you what do you think? Well, I, I have mixed feelings because yes, I don't. I agree with Nana and you that I don't like being in juries, but of course, then I can imagine people who will listen to us. You know, have this question like, so why are you doing that, right? Uh, so of course. Um, uh, yeah, you said it's a gig, so for me it's a, an opportunity again to you know to, to play for people mm -hmm. and uh, to maybe show them my work, mm -hmm. and therefore uh, you know by sitting in the jury is by sitting. Should we pause? Yeah, okay. no, just pause. Andres here. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and Trey's in the room, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So we, ju we just got joined by Andre Pushkarev, who's uh, also here on the jury on uh, vibraphone. And he sat in on one of the marimba uh, performances because um, the stipulations say that if uh, you know there's a student of one of the jury that they'll have a substitute judge. So anyway, Andre's hanging out with us. And um, yeah, so Theo, continue. You were saying Yes, that, I, I actually uh, lost it. Ah, yeah. So yeah, the way... Uh, yeah, anyway, the way I see it is that... Uh, Maybe the, the you know I, I hate judging you know it's it's, it's a huge res responsibility because mm. you know especially in the summer you know people are not on vacations they're practicing at home they're spending money they're coming here and then you have to tell them that they're not good they're not passing to the next round etc etc they're frustrating they're frustrated with you probably because you know each person believes the best for himself, of course, no? Yeah, you have to be the bad guy at some point. At some point you yeah. have to be, and that's not nice, because, you know, it, actually I'm the guy who never won any single big competition, and I was the guy who was always angry about the, the jury members who put, uh, you know, who judge the way they judge, and, uh, you know, there are different kind of competitions, we all know that, the different kind of people, etc. So, I understand completely the people, the other side, I mean, of, you know, of the players. But I just think that there's a possibility for me if I know something that I can share with them and maybe I can tell them. So for me, the most important in these events is the fact that I can play for them. So it's a chance actually for me to present my work and then I can just speak about a couple of things that maybe help them later in their, in their uh, you know, in their career or 
just for the development or I don't know. So for me, it's an educative thing and and not uh, to whom I'm going to give the first or second prize. Mm. So that's actually, um, maybe it's an excuse. Maybe I'm finding excuses because the truth is that I, I do hate being <laughs> in, in a jury. And I'm the one who tells <laughs> during the festival, which has competition, I'm saying the, the, con, the con, Competitors, the competitors don't do competitions, but start to organize concerts, okay? Because right. you need to become an artist and not just a guy who learns a couple of pieces to play it in front of the jury, you yeah. know? So I'm the bad guy because I'm destroying the whole competition. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the, don't don't show it to the organizers, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, speaking of the organizers, we should probably say it's it's not this competition that we don't like being the jury on. It's just it's inherently um, hard to do because you don't want to. It's hard. It's hard to judge people, yeah. and yes. and you know we. No, it's not hard to judge people. It's hard to to tell people that they're not good enough yeah. to pass to the second round or to the finale. You know, yeah. I, I don't like telling to people you're not good. It's like saying to a woman you're not beautiful enough. You know, I don't want to dance with you. You know, it's like. It's, it's rude, isn't it? I mean, it's like, I'm not going to buy flowers for you, but I'm going to buy flowers for the next lady, you know? I yeah. found it... I found it hard. You know, we just had this... Of course, the competitors approach us always very politely, and they say, hey, can I have my some notes? Can you tell me what I could do better? Even the winners say, hey, can you mm -hmm. give me some notes? Um, and we just had that really nice... Uh, mm -hmm. The three of us sat down outside with uh, all the mosquitoes and with uh, Giuseppe, and Giuseppe played great. The, the hard thing for me is to explain. Uh, are you going? Uh, You're not going to speak. Slightly. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. You don't want to say hello. Yes, you are. Well, yes, yes. Hello, 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 hello to everyone. Okay. You like being on the jury? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, actually, yes. Yeah, that's interesting. Can you, can you, yeah, can can you explain, explain that to us? Because yeah. it's interesting. Oh, no, yeah. Andre, yeah, that's it's great. Because it's, it's, it's interesting it's, because I, I see different, different schools, different kind of playing, kinds of playing. It's interesting. To hear. To hear or to judge. But, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, judge. To judge. Okay. Yes, we have to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a rules. But uh, anyway, you know, I'm always open and interesting, interested for, um, about people, about, about everything around. So uh, today I saw like three, four different schools and it was interesting. Yeah. Asian, European, Polish. It's interesting. Yeah, Polish is not Europe, yes. <laughs> Sorry for that. Anyway, but our, anyway. Our, our, our first prize is Polish. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you had a killer first prize, right? Yeah. Hmm? You had a killer first prize winner, right? He was a good guy, played good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did really well. That's mm -hmm. cool. He played this uh, tune by Gary Burton. Uh huh. Uh, Jagger, this Jagger, Jagger, Jagger. Yeah. Amazing, yeah, amazing. I was surprised, yeah. Wow, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's fun to to listen all of them. All no. It's interesting, from different countries. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's fascinating. And to see if you see any correlation, uh, like I know in the snare drum, mm -hmm. there was these, uh, I guess, three, I think, three guys, all very similar playing styles, the exact same teacher listed, and that's that's fascinating. And I like learning new rep, of course. I always pick up at least some new piece of literature at a competition. So I, I do like that, but man, it's hard to explain to them. And like we were having this great conversation with Giuseppe out there, it's hard to explain how this other person was more expressive than he was. You know, it's hard to... Yeah. And then, of course, they say, well, how can I be more expressive? And it's just mm. like inherently hard thing to teach. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's a hard actually, thing to yeah. explain. If, if when to have you given comment yet or not? Mm, no. no, only only. only uh, 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 yeah. okay. But what I really did like uh, this guy who played Jack the Sagat, he did it wonderfully in crazy tempo. Mm -hmm. But after we uh, applaud, applaud, he said, "Okay, I could do it better." <laughs> he said, "He said, said that? Yeah, okay. I could do it better." So maybe he was disappointed with himself. Oh, well, maybe, yeah. maybe. But anyway, it was great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, it was great. It, 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 
It was the first prize. Yes, 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 yes. I just said, yes, you are. Mm -hmm. You are the first prize. Yeah. Okay, I could do it better. It's oh. great because the person is judging mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, he, not, is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he is not satisfied. He is not satisfied. It's so yeah, great. So he has, he has a yeah. ability to, yeah. to, to, to develop. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I mean, that says it's more about, uh, you know, they're in c competition with themselves more than just trying to get a prize. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yes, right, right. yes. Right. Interesting. Yeah. It's, in, it's, it's important, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I also, you know, guys, I didn't win any competition in the, in the mm -hmm. because of a very, very simple reason. I didn't... Uh, Took part in any... Yes. Uh, that's good because I did yeah. took part in many games. <laughs> 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 you got beaten. You got oh, beaten man, by I got Nana. beaten by yeah. the time. I mean, seriously, and I was so offended. And you know, yeah. I had that only one time. competition uh, I took part. I was fifteen mm -hmm. years old, and I went to Donetsk. It's mm -hmm. uh, east of Ukraine, so it was a competi percussion competition and. I was in, the bed, in, in bad shape, but I was lost. Mm. So after I decided no competition at all in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. because it was uh, completely unfair. Mm -hmm. Out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, the main person, Charmaine of uh, competition, was an enemy of my professor. I didn't know him before. Oh, right. Yeah. I found out a little bit later. So I had yeah, no chance. Sucks. If, no. Even if I were played like a god, so I had no chances. Mm. Because this person saw Alexander Blinov, ah, okay, 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 let's do some. Oh, yeah, 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 ah, okay, bye bye. Yeah. That's all. So it yeah. was my first and last competition in my life. Yeah. Well, that's another thing, all the dirt that surrounds these it, sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, things like that yeah. just sour your own whole concept yeah, of so, competition. So that's the deal, you know. We, uh, so you wanted to say something? Yeah, 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 I was going to say competition is not everything, but you know, competition could be good in a way. You know, the, all participants, my, especially my students, they need a goal, like you know, step by yeah. step. Yeah. So if yeah, they right. set up their goal, okay, uh, this competition, actually yeah. they practice harder. Yeah, they, sure. yeah their motivation yeah. gets higher, higher. Yeah. But you know. But after competition, I always tell my students, you know, the result of the competition is not everything. Right. If, even they get first prize, don't satisfy. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are the last, please don't be upset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So preparation for the competition, I think, is It's experience. Good. It's experience. Well, and then if you, if you win first prize, you, uh, you don't really learn anything necessarily. You know, you you maybe reach that point and you're you're satisfied and you don't go any further unless you have this this vibraphone player's perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you mentioned Theo earlier. Some people they win a prize and then they think, oh, they're successful. They've won. They've gotten the whole world of music's uh, confirmation that they are amazing. That's why um, I was yeah. fighting today because of this guy who came just alone to final round. He mm. was alone in final round. And uh, my two colleagues uh, wanted to give him first prize. Yeah. I told him, listen, it, it wasn't first prize. It wasn't first prize. He, yeah. he, he, he played well, okay, he did well. But anyway, it's not a first prize. Please, let's not spoil him. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because now we will give him first prize and he will, oh my god, yes, <laughs> I'm a first, I'm a first prize. No, let's give, let's give him seven. <laughs> yeah. He will put it into CV. Yeah. He is second prize of international competition. Yes, but not first. Please, don't think that you are perfect. Sure. Yeah, it's dangerous to think you you're done. You weren't perfect yeah. at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have a lot of things to do. You have a lot of things to uh, to work on, and uh, it's not a first prize. No, 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 no. He is nice guy. Yes, I know he is nice guy. But let's 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 not spoil him mm -hmm. with first prize. Yeah. 
Well, it, it was my point of view, and uh, somehow, okay, 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 okay. Let's give it a second. I, I feel guilty actually, because to my uh, jury members, jury, jury mates, oh, wanted to give him first. Yeah. I was against only because uh, yes, it wasn't perfect. Yeah. It wasn't perfect. Yeah. If you are perfect, okay, receive first prize and okay, uh, you can you have three days to, to, to relax and after you have to work on. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, if you are not, sorry, guys, he is alone. Yes, I understand, but no. Yeah, yeah, I was in that situation uh, last year at a competition in a snare drum thing, and Laurel is probably listening is knows exactly what I'm talking about because she was in the audience and she came up to me afterwards and she said, wow, well, that's, man, that was easy because this player was so outstanding. And I said, oh yeah, I know, great, this is no problem. You know, this, this girl deserves absolute first prize, no problem. And then I sat down with the other judges and they were against me. We had, we mm -hmm. had a two hour discussion and I was, <laughs> yeah, I was just pleading with them and I got them to agree on a lot of things, uh, one of them being, you know, let's consider that when you give someone uh, the winning prize, you're kind of, you know, unofficially welcoming, welcoming them into the professional uh, performance mm -hmm. circle, if you will. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that pretty loosely, but, you know, you're welcoming, welcoming them into that. And if you had to imagine one of these competitors that you have to judge with next year is going to sit next to you, yep. I said, who would it be? And they said, oh, yeah, you're right. It would have to be that person. And I said, okay, great, we're done. That's the winner. And they still didn't buy it. They still weren't into it. They thought, oh, their person's music wasn't hard enough. They didn't play long enough. Uh, but not true. There was no stipulation in the rules that said you had to play a you know, certain level of difficulty piece or that you had to play a certain uh, minimum amount of time. It was, I think it was 25 minute maximum. And this person played a, a, a 15 minute piece. Huh. What's the problem? So anyway, it's that's another thing I dislike about it is I don't want to get in a fight <laughs> with you guys. Of course, yeah, 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 you know. yeah. But it's I think it's always like this. Alright, thanks Andre. Andre. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Andre. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Have a nice recording. Yep, thank you. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Yeah. Yeah, we can wait. Ah, oh, no, no. Yeah, I was saying so. Doesn't matter. Oh yeah, so so I was just saying it's uh, it's a pain to get in a fight or you know with the other ju the jury, with the rest of the jury. I found out that no matter how uh, good you get along with with people uh, outside the competition, as soon as you sit in the table and you need to judge, then you know there is uh, some you can get some serious trouble because you know all all of us we have different opinions and stuff and. Mm -hmm. You know, people can judge objectively, but most of the people are judging upon themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they listen, they, they listen to people playing the music that they're playing, and they're judging upon that, how they play that. So, mm -hmm. that's also a tricky one, and therefore, I, that's why I don't like it. But, we still but music it. is not the only one correct answer. You know, all, all many, you know, could be many correct answers, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that, that, that's actually my question always, why, why the percussion world is organizing all of these competitions, you know. Mm -hmm. that, like, that, a like, like a festival. Like a festival. Yeah, but, well, why but do you? If it's, if it's a festival, uh, you know, why, you know, the majority of people are leaving after the first day because they didn't pass to the second round. So they just they don't, they don't want to stay, they're so frustrated about the fact that they lose they, they, they don't want to listen to the master classes on the next day, etc., etc. Yeah. But even if they stay, it's really difficult. Uh, for them, it's really difficult to accept uh, some comments, maybe even nice comments, or you know. Uh, I had meant, I, yeah, because they, they close, they don't listen, they they don't want to, to hear. Mm -hmm. I had many situations where. Uh, people like after the first round they were out, but they still stayed and they came for you know for uh, to ask you know the opinion my opinion and I start speaking about some things and they say no but I no I'm not and they start getting defended you know defending themselves so um, yeah I'm just saying that maybe it's 
time, good time to think about a new um, way of um, a new form of a festival, maybe, maybe, like maybe it could be not so much competition and, a, and a, but more of a playing and um, I don't know. Well, I, th I think there, you know, the reason for the festivals is, you know, people are passionate about expanding percussion, getting it further out there, doing, you know, achieving what the piano and the violin has done mm -hmm. for our own instrument and. Uh, so I think it's good, you know, I think it's it's good they're trying and it's uh, it, it would be nice if it was a, a more household thing the way piano is and, you know, mm -hmm. the way the other instruments are. Nana, you're going to do a camp, is that yes. right? Yes. Wow. Yeah, because I, you know, I had a, actually the same feeling and I didn't feel comfortable with, you know, competition. You know, I've been to competition you know, when I was younger, but I hated it. I didn't want to do it, but I had to. <laughs> so... But, you know, I want my students to have more interest to music. They, you know, and also I want them to have more bigger picture what is music and not only marimba or percussion. So that's why I started uh, to organize my own marimba camp in Japan since last year. So this year it's going to be my second time. So no competition at my camp. Mm -hmm. Only uh, faculties concerts, mm -hmm. uh, group lessons, and students concert, and uh, also volunteer concerts. So mm -hmm. we go to hospital or uh, mm -hmm. any other. Uh, wow. Uh, the old person. How yeah, can I say? care center. Care center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually. Assisted living center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last year we visited uh, three places, hospital, and then we gave a free concert to them because the purpose was, you know, they appreciate music, but they cannot come to the concert hall. And they can, you know, because they can't go sure. outside. So that's why I decided, oh, okay. you know, it's like a music, live music, pizza delivery or something, live music delivery. Let's let for our live music to them and then yeah that's fantastic idea. Yeah. where uh, your website people can find out yeah. about the camp yes it's called Yatsugatake Marimba Camp Yatsugatake means Mount Yatsugatake in Nagano mm -hmm. only like two hours from Tokyo it's in a beautiful nature actually it's my uh, uh, where I grew up. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your hometown. Yeah, my hometown. Yeah. So, yeah. Who, do you know who the faculty will be at? Uh, this year, uh, last year, Fumito Nunoya mm -hmm. and I did. And then this year, Komor, Kunihiko Komori, mm -hmm. he graduated at Peabody, uh, Eastman and Peabody. And, uh, mm -hmm. and also, I invited a Baroque chamberlist. Mm -hmm. So I wanted him to talk about the Baroque music theory. Cool. Yeah. So three faculty, yep. including yourself? Yep. Yeah. So that's one more than the previous year. Is, do you, is the plan for it to keep yeah, growing? And then, do you want it to be big? Do you want yeah, to... I want to make my camp and grow, and then hopefully I can invite you guys. Mm -hmm. into not, you know, no. I want to make it. <laughs> no. 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 What do you mean, though? There's no. no. There's no competition. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. I can, uh, <laughs> Theo wants to know how much this pays. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How much depends do these old the people pay? Cassie, you're an Italian, just admit that, please. You're an Italian. I am, yeah. You how just understand. Yeah. He gets straight to the point. That's all that's all that's been happening to me this whole week. It's like, Cangelosi, this is Italian, yes? Where you? yes, yes, it's Italian, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stop so, that. <laughs> so you must speak. No, we don't no, speak. I, no, we don't I'm, speak no. It's an Italian name, but I'm a freaking just American. I speak one language. It's very <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, a lot of the discussion in the master classes, uh, mostly incited by us, I have to say, uh, has been about by you. Yes. Well, I don't know if it's by me, but you know, <laughs> I mean, you're the one who has a, a strong opinion. But the, the oh, rep, so so you know, the the ref and okay. So Andre was saying he it's, it's good. Andre came in because he had some really good points about the good things about competitions yeah. and, and judging and yeah, that's he's. You know, he's spot on, of course. Um, but one of those good things was a uh, rep, and mm -hmm. it's nice to discover a new rep. 
Um, but I'm also hearing a lot of the same rep that I've heard a lot, and that's hard. I feel like it it wears on me a little bit. Um, but anyway, we've we've talked on and off uh, by ourselves and in the master classes about the rep and where it's going. And um, so Theo, why don't you mm-hmm. you know why don't you just go on a little rant? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. yeah uh, well, I have to say that uh, just for the you know just for the books for the story that uh, I have played all of the marine literature before I start do what I do right now. So I don't want everybody to think that you know I start playing marimba and directly start playing this repertoire, um, piano repertoire on on the instrument. Right? Uh, in general, what I don't like about the reporter is the amount of bad music written. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to be so direct, but it's actually bad music. Sure. Okay. And, um, and of course, each one can play anything he or she wants in a concert, etc., etc. And maybe, yes, but I always see it from the educative side. That how do we, you know, because we give comments uh, not only we, but generally teachers, marimba players, to competitors, they give comments like, your phrasing, you know, it could be a bit more of that, could be more of that. And it's always about phrasing and about touch and don't hit the instrument, etc., etc. So my question is like, how do you expect marimba players to follow all of these uh, advices and comments if they don't see that in the music? So it's, you know, it's different to uh, to take if you open, uh, let's say, Greek music, Tchaikovsky music, uh, you know, the, the kinder album, uh, you know, the ch- children album, and uh, if, if you see the, and you start playing it, and then you will see the amount of, of information that it's in the music. And now open, uh, like, a typical marimba uh, little piece that usually is asked to be played, like, in the first or second round. I'm not going to say any names, I'm sorry, but I don't want to be so direct uh, and then look there which kind of information is there so my question is always how do you expect marimba players to be to grow as a musicians if we have such a uh, you know such amount of bad music yeah, written, sure. for, written for this instrument yeah. and of course if uh, you know if people are going to competitions and you know they have to learn these pieces so uh, that actually leads us to, uh, in a way, in a path where uh, we become this kind of little poppy, poppy music. So if, if I understand it correctly, it's more than just a matter of taste. It's a matter of a lot of this music is lacking the things we critique for and the things we really want. Exactly. So how are the yeah. students supposed to learn? Exactly. That? Yes, and exactly. And also the repertoire in the marimba is too a wide a variety of music in the world of mu- world of music, Western music, mm-hmm. you know, just a uh, mix of many, many different genres of music. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's so hard. To, it's, it, I, I can't compare it in a back and, you know, the new jazzy poppy music. It shouldn't be the same category. It's no comparison. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, sure. How can I compare Bach and yeah, and then the jazzy poppy music, which was written, you know, a year ago? Mm-hmm. It's totally different. So, but you know, many of the marimba competition in the, in the repertoire says you know that just too many mixed. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. genre of music. So, yeah, so it's yeah. hard to judge. So, in one round, you have to play this groovy, repetitive piece, and in another yeah. round, you have to minimal? play minimal Bach. Yeah, yeah. Bach, yeah. minimal. Or yeah, but there's sorry to just to interrupt, but there's you said uh, um, groovy, groovy piece. Mm-hmm. Now I have a question: uh, Why are the, why these pieces are being reter- interpreted as groovy? If if a groove is there, does it mean that it has to be uh, like unmusical and uh, you know what I mean? This groove yeah, sure. can, 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 yeah, can you could fly, have, you know? Yeah, you could have sub, uh, su- substantive music that's yeah. based in a groove. Exactly. Yeah, sure. But it can fly. No, it, it, it doesn't have to be as, as, as this drumming. 
thing. Right. You don't play paradiddles on a marimba. No, I'm not. You know, wh why? Why do we have to interpret it like, like this? Mm. Uh, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's sure. that's. I think that's uh, again the lack of in the education that we do have. Why? Because we are trained on 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 this music, mm. and of course we are too proud, and we are saying that you know we. We shouldn't play transcriptions because you know we have our own uh, reporter, etc., etc. I'm not saying that we don't have good music. I'm just saying that we have too much of a bad music, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, yeah, I and I think that the the, the 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 traditional composers that we do have, like Gordon Stout, let's say, mm -hmm. I really think that people should ask these composers to write more, maybe commission more pieces, because I have a strong feeling that they, they didn't open themselves completely yet. Mm -hmm. You know, because if, if you if you see if you see that what Gordon was writing uh, in the beginning before, everybody knows, you know, these two Mexican dances, but if you see what he's writing nowadays, it's a completely different thing. So uh, there is a huge, actually, what well, it my personal opinion, no, it's it a huge uh, potential there. So and I, I'm pretty sure that he's not the only one. So we should ask these people maybe to write more and more and more. Sure. And you know to to push the boundaries a bit of of the instrument. Uh, and at the same time, maybe try to put a bit of uh, classical music and work with pianist and, and, and violinist. So I, I think every uh, percussionist has to have lessons by a piano player or a classical. Classical, but not only like to play the piano, but to play for a pianist on marimba, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, no matter how good percussionists we are, you know, there is uh, no way we know the same amount of information about music that a pianist has just from the repertoire. And sure. the idea that a pianist can, can say to us, or to a marimba player, let's say, about the touch, the, the touche, the French word, yeah, etc. etc. Sorry, I just took, took, took over. I just. Uh, no, that's great. I, I took a little nap, so it's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. well, I think you have a good point. And, you know, we've seen people, of course, try. You know, there's the intermediate etudes, uh, not etudes, intermediate pieces that Nancy put together. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and, and like we said earlier, the, um, you know, I think the problem is we have really good pieces, but uh, a lot of them are too hard. Mm -hmm. So people say, oh, well, it's okay. The poppy pieces are those, can be those intermediate pieces or... Or whatever, but yeah, you're right. It would be great if there was, uh, you know, Vignano had intermediate pieces, you know, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, Stephen Mackey had beginner pieces. Mm -hmm. That would, yeah, that would be really cool. But uh, but compared to pianist or violinist, even yeah. they're ten years old, they play Mozart or you know, yeah, right. massive pieces. Yeah, yeah. You know what the uh, I found. Uh, maybe the key point why somebody has to play a bit of. At least some Clementi sonatinas mm -hmm. is it's the fact that uh, you know uh, a percussionist, a marimba player. I think we really need to <clears throat> learn to listen to the harmony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not just strike the instrument and phrase in a way that we just feel like it. You know, if you ask a marimba player why you phrase like this, it's because I feel like it. Yeah. So the harmony doesn't tell to him. Nothing. <clears throat> so, of course, if you take like uh, Alejandro Vignao, the it must be the harmony can be too complicated, you know. Instead of a Clementi, where it's like tonica, subdominante, dominante, mm -hmm. finished, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everything is a tone. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I wonder if it's um, you know, because we're raised as drummers, and then we're supposed mm -hmm. to learn marimba uh, and vibraphone and xylophone. Also, I wonder if you know, people like you guys who are uh, making themselves distinct as keyboard artists, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and I know uh, Theo is, of course, also a timpanist and a percussionist and symphony, but Nana, yeah, you've made a whole career of the marimba, Nancy's made a whole career of the marimba, and, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, as that happens more, mm. maybe now that we don't have to learn buzz rolls and learn drum set beats, 
we can spend more time uh, really yeah. focusing. You know, maybe that has to happen first. Like percussionists have to be allowed to just be marimbas before yeah. this process can start. My case, you know, it's a little unusual to others because I started learning marimba and piano at the same time when I was three. Mm -hmm. And then also I played the violin when I was in high school. So I didn't play any any of the percussion drums until I get to the conservatory. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So right now, of course, that's, that's worked for you because you're an amazing player, but a lot of people would say, Oh, that's that's great for you, but that's dangerous because you need to know how to play buzz rolls and flam taps, and uh, you you know you need to, you need to be able to do the other gigs. So right, so right, until right, until, right. until that situation is absolved, uh, yeah, this might. And of course, you know, under all this is we're trying to compare ourselves to pianists and violinists. You know, they of course have the hundreds and hundreds of years mm -hmm. uh, of their development for repertoire and, and all of that. So. Yeah, listeners, of course, you know, we, we know this. Um, but maybe once that's allowed, you know, violinists are violinists. Mm -hmm. They're not stringists. Mm -hmm. You know, right. we, yeah, are, right. we are percussionists. We are <laughs> expected to play everything. A violinist is not expected to play harp, cello, guitar, right. Right. you know. So, yeah, you see what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe the instruments need to, uh, you know, uh, diversify and, and be be accepted as distinct uh you know you could even make a case you know when i've done these uh these tom sherwood modern snare drum competitions man that music gets deep it's just snare drum you know and mm -hmm. um I, I it makes me think okay so this thing that's happening with the marimba players like nana and nancy and you know these career marimbas humito uh, the snare drum might be coming up next, you know, and that's a, that's a crazy idea to me, you know, it's just a drum. No, of course a snare drummer can play a little timpani at least. Of course a snare drum player can play set up. Uh, so anyway, you know, maybe I wonder if that has to happen before, you know, we'll be able to really do what you're saying, you know. Well, in, is in States, does it exist, the only marimba studies? Does it exist? Like uh, a faculty yeah. only for marimba? Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Exist, Nancy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the Boston Conservatory is the only one uh, unique That's the story uh, a school that has a master program, master, master. degree in marimba. But no bachelor. No percussion. No, no bachelor for marimba. I don't think so. No bachelor. No. Uh -huh. And it's in some programs they they have loose looser rules. I mean, if your if your teacher signs the paper. Mm -hmm. Then you graduate. Um, so of course mm -hmm. there are people graduating with really good marimba skills and low, you know, timpani skills or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but the degree does not say marimbist the way it says violinist. You know, I have a, yeah. you know, someone will have a bachelor's of performance in violin. <clears throat> um, yeah, but then so they ours have, are all percussion. Then they have like a question: What this marimbist will do for a living? Right. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. that that's the exactly. state. That's, that's the state, state we're in right now. So yeah. I, I think, and I think, man, I think most people agree it'd be great if we had this heavier music and and good music that was beginner, intermediate, advanced. Yeah, I think there's really no argument there. Of course, there's the the discussion of taste. You know, some people are really happy to have the pop music on marimba, and they think that brings a wider audience. Blah 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 blah. We've heard all that a thousand times. Um, But yeah, you know, of course, we're in this state. Are we supposed to train soloists to focus on one instrument? Are we supposed to train uh, well-rounded percussionists? I know when you go to a job interview to be a teacher, yeah, you won't get the job if you say, I teach just only, only just one thing, you know, anything. Yeah, I, I only can do timpani. Um, so you also have to hire a xylophonist, a vibraphonist. Yeah, you see, so basically yeah. the market indicates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, so um, we yeah. should create the market then. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think we meet tomorrow and we just put it. We the just do that. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Just, yeah. we can do no, a fun, fundraiser. 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 But Indiegogo. Indi yeah. <laughs> but seriously, like, like I have, I have this idea. I mean, okay, there is like competitions and. People are coming to play, and some places there's no like uh, for first prize, they, you know, they don't get anything, and for some some places they get some money. But here's an idea: why don't we create like an agency for 
percussionists, you know, like artist industry for percussionists, and then it's going to be global, and there is a competition, and we're going to be choosing the very, very best, and then through this agency, this guy, this person, going to be getting concerts around the world. Hmm. Because what's going on now, we kind of, uh, we have artists who are fighting by, for themselves, Somebody does it, somebody does it less, somebody does it, doesn't do it at all. And eventually these people ended up in, uh, in you know, school, some school job or whatever, or mm-hmm. things that they don't want. But uh, there is no market for us, so why don't we do something to create this market? I mean, if you apply in the concert hall and you say, you know, I'm a percussionist, and it's like, yeah, why? Mm-hmm. But the, if there is a, like, a, you know, an artist agency saying to a concert hall, listen, I have an interesting guy, who is, uh, you know, a person like uh, Ivan Trevino, let's say, right, okay, you can, you know, maybe you like his music, maybe you don't like his music, you know, it's a matter of taste, yes, but he's an artist, you know, why, you know what I mean? I think so, yeah. So take this guy and put him in a, in a concert hall, and then that's what we're going to be, so people will get to know Marimba, mm-hmm. and also in this way we're going to be creating the, the market mm-hmm. for ourselves. Well, and, and I bet people who do these competitions, do seminars, like the, like Loris, the artistic director yeah, here, yeah. you know, he would probably say, well, I am doing that, yeah, look, at, that look, yeah. this, yeah. look at this work, you know, and... We should sell it to Loris and take percentage of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. Yeah. Oh, we're going to be rich. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's tricky because people say, well, well, we'll do more to expand. Um, so Nana's doing a new camp mm-hmm. now, and mm-hmm. it sounds, sounds great. You're taking Marimba to old folks' homes, to mm-hmm. hospitals. That's amazing. It's like an incredibly charitable thing to do, and yeah. it's great for the yeah. students. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Uh, some and people, you need to of course, right? So, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't do <laughs> so, you know, and, and uh, uh, some people, they're trying to run a festival, and they'll get frustrated when someone else starts a festival, because now that means students are... Yeah, yeah, no, their numbers yeah, go yeah, down. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's yeah. a hard problem. You know, it's it's not something we can just make a market for. It'll take a long time. Yeah, it will, will take a long time. And it's, definitely. And it's, and it's hard. I mean, it's compounded by the fact that, you know, the concert hall audience is, is going down. Really, in Japan, the opposite thing. It's going you good. Know, yeah, people don't buy CDs, you know. Mm. But, but, you know, actually, people want to hear a live concert. Mm. So mm-hmm. we are audience. A concert hall is increasing. Yeah. In Japan. Okay, but I'm going to tell you something. The the audience you said that yes, especially in Europe, they, they don't go so much in concert halls mm-hmm. lately because actually they're I think they're bored. But mm-hmm. here is here is a thing. I've been invited to a, to a Bach festival in uh, in in Belgium, Concert de Bruges, and it was a late night concert. Like it started at 10:30. Mm-hmm. Okay, and sold out. Sure. Yeah. They were interested to see what is this thing, what is this guy doing on the Marimba Bach, what, what yeah. is this? Sure. Yeah, and they liked it, it was perfect. So I think um, it's, it's something new and this is as an idea, I'm not saying that we have to organize it, but as an idea, uh, you know, like, uh, you know in States they, they created these United Artists uh, film making, maker, United Artists. Yeah, next yeah, to, like uh, a, yeah, collective artists who, yeah, who yeah, start a yeah, collective yeah. and, and help they each did, other. And you know who did that? It was, I don't know. Who, yeah, it was but. it was organized by Charlie Chaplin and and his friends. Why? Because they needed uh, to have the control over the, the script that they're gonna write and right. etc. Cetera, et cetera, and their rights and etc. 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 And not that the studio is hiring you, mm-hmm. but they're gonna pay you this money and that's it. You, know, you don't have any rights over the movie. So these guys started it first. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, it was difficult, but it was like a collective thing, thing from rich artists, yeah, yeah, right? Like Charlie Chaplin, and they organized it. So uh, I just had this crazy idea, why don't we organize such a like basic pay PS, it's like a collectivity thing, mm-hmm. collective thing, right? So why don't we organize an agency for percussionists, like artist agency? Right? Yeah, yeah. Because so then, that's great, yeah. then percussionists could find you know concerts in concert halls mm-hmm. for normal people, audience like that hear piano and violin. Yeah. So well, and and it, it, we've seen a platform for that 
beginning. You know, Evelyn mm-hmm. Glennie's been a soloist yeah, for yeah, years. Yeah, uh, yeah, now yeah. Colin Curry is a solo mm-hmm. deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We see it more and more. Of course. So yeah, I think it's uh, it's happening. It's you know, it is happening. Slowly. It's, yeah, it's, happening. Happening. it's happening, and it, yeah. it just will take time. You know, I mean, the the solo piano has a history. You know, you could oh, yeah. you could read a, a thousand page book or more on the history yeah. of the solo, yeah. Yeah. solo yeah. piano, and you know all the all the different. I remember how it's only like fifty years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like we were saying. Um, I don't know a few nights ago when we were hanging out. Uh, you know the the first person to hold four mallets or, or you know the first person to bring the marimba yeah. as, as a solo, solo instrument, instrument still is alive. still alive, <laughs> still alive. Oh, yeah. still alive. Yeah. so it's really young and yeah, yeah, yeah i guess i yeah i just try to be patient you know it's like okay this isn't going to happen in my lifetime so mm-hmm. it's okay you know and i think very opposite to this uh, uh shinto buddhism thing i i Say embarrassingly, I, I do the art for myself. <laughs> like, you know, I do it for me. You know, I really do. It's, it's a, okay. It's, yeah, no, I think it's okay. But I think I think what what your point of view on it is much more wholesome and inviting and, and inspiring, really. But um, yeah, I you know because pe- people will say to me, Casey, why don't you write some easier music? For that, children, that'll, next generation. Yeah, yeah, that'll help people because yeah. your pieces are too hard, and and then they try to play them and they sound like shit. And, and I say that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, well, a lot of people say that. You know, it's like, and I agree. You know, I'm t- I'm tired of I I don't like hearing my pieces played like shit. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's it. I would enjoy that too, but uh, I also don't. I don't know. I don't have any inspiration to write. You know, pieces to solve this problem. You know, it's like I don't. I don't know if. It's my responsibility to speed this process along or not. And it's like, oh, it's about what I want to play on stage and, you know, what the audience is paying to hear. Eh, I don't know. I hope they like it. Yeah, yeah I but can't control what they like. Wait a second. Right. But then don't wonder when students come to you and you don't agree with their pink punk, pink punk movements. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, sure. So you can get control actually of the earlier education a bit more and mm. then, you know, to contribute a bit mm. to, to that and mm-hmm. to create what it's called school, you know, because the, yeah. the crazy thing about, let's say, in violin, you probably know Yash Haifiz, mm. right? So this guy, you know, he was an American, right? But actually he's a, a Ukrainian Jewish guy who came to St. Petersburg to study um, with a famous teacher, a famous teacher, um, And I forgot his name. I have no idea. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The fact is that Yasha Havis' teacher uh, knew uh, a German guy who was a generation before him, and this German guy knew Paganini. So it's oh, wow. so he had the Boeings and everything direct from mm-hmm. the, nearly direct from the source. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah sure, sure. So they have this thing called. School of violin playing, you know, yeah. we don't have this thing. But well, and one has to create it. I think. Yeah, and maybe maybe the conclusion here is for uh, us, the teachers. Oh, sorry, I remember our professor, our our. Okay, our, it was the guy who Tchaikovsky was the concerto for. Oh, okay. So, so maybe the solution is for us when we need a beginner piece or an intermediate piece, we don't go to some piece we hate and go, well, they need an easy piece, so I guess this is all we can offer. But we dig a little deeper and try to find a piece that we think is is worthwhile and really good, and is maybe a transcription, or is maybe we look harder for rep. Because I know a lot of teachers do the opposite; they want their students to learn setup, also known as multi percussion in the states, um, and they go, "Ah, oh, there's no good multi percussion rep." So what do they do? They give their student rebonds for their <laughs> first multi percussion piece. That's- You know, even Ben on the podcast said his first piece. Denex. Yeah, and of course, I think he was he was ready for it. He had done plenty of other things, but I think that's insane. You know, but your first multi multi percussion piece, you're not mature enough to play what's in there mentally. You don't have the physicality to play what's in there. Um, so I think it's almost equally harmful to to do that over prescribe good music. You know, that music's really good and heavy, and give it to a, a someone who's a beginner because you don't know what else to give them and mm-hmm. you have too much pride to give them bad rep um, or you have too much dedication to 
uh, promoting what you think is good that you end up making a bad decision mm-hmm. and that that hurts that piece you know sure. I mean man how many times have we heard that piece played badly you know and like like you said it's uh and this is where we just disagree a little bit you know you said earlier Bach is is so good uh, a beginner can play it sounds good an advanced yeah. player can play it it sounds good but but I feel differently I feel like it's so uh, it's there's so much there that if you play it badly so much is missing um, that it's it's difficult, you know, to to appreciate at a at a low level. Yeah, I actually completely agree with that. Oh, good. I just um, thinking maybe uh, well, give him a little uh, Bach piece, but maybe you know everybody knows the cello suites, right? But uh, you know, there is so much more. Right, there's so little, much more, and, and, and maybe we should dig a little deeper. Yeah, and you just know, take very, a, just a little transcription and, and teach the kid to phrase and sure. you know and well, not you know, hit the that, instrument. And that, that's why that's why Simple. I like I like the Garwood Whaley books. There's What's that? Garwood Whaley has uh, keyboard books one and two, uh, or, or I guess they're called I think it's beginner and advanced. You've probably seen them before. Beginner, intermediate. The green spiral, the blue spiral. Anyway, I love it because there's Leopold Mozart, there's Mozart, there's Clementi in there, oh. and they're short little pieces. Fantastic. Uh, sometimes the, the longest one is maybe four pages, and the shortest ones are half a page. So you can teach those fundamentals Something. on a really basic level. But I think other teachers, uh, they don't maybe don't know about these resources, so they go, oh well, I need a I need an easy piece. Uh, I, all I know is the Bach cello suite yeah it's like okay yeah that's a good no, but it happens that's good music yes, but, of course, yes. right right but dig a little deeper like find more resources so yeah okay. maybe maybe that's the the message here yes sometimes i just try to talk really fast so nana can't understand and can't contradict me yeah you, you do that in pro- no she's just too nice to you too nice yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah pretty well, nice. you know japanese people you never know what they're thinking <laughs> <I'm pretty open. laughs> hey well thanks guys that was fun um yeah, I appreciate it. It's been it's been a good festival, good judging, good playing, good master classes. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. Uh, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thoughts. Okay, bye everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Real smooth. <laughs>